welcome back to the Citizen Channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well. And this feature called Match Worn Shirts. What happened? Yes, welcome. Welcome to this. Yes, this is inspired, of course, by Big Blue Mark McCarthy. His, his Twitter thing will be on, on the screen there. Uh, yes, I thought I thought I'd just take what he does. Uh, I hope he doesn't mind. I've, I've sent a little thing to him anyway of this anyway. It's just, just to, to build upon what the wonderful work he does in this, where we look at a, a shirt that Mark's featured. And it might be something a little bit different, where it's not been used much because obviously some of these shirts in the old days uh, uh, they didn't just get worn once like they do now they got what they got worn uh, new washed and ironed uh, pressed and got worn again didn't they so it's just a little uh, something a little bit different let me know what you think anyway if you enjoy this so we're gonna have a look at uh, uh, match worn shirts what happened uh, today so please if you are new to the channel push that subscribe button push the bell notifications It'd be great to have you on board and while you're pushing the buttons if you can push that little like button that thumbs up button be much appreciated by an old 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 well uh, fairly warm today it's been a bit cold as i'm recording this i don't know when you're watching it you could be watching it in summer i don't know but it's been a bit nippy here in the uk as i'm recording this uh, so please please enjoy and do everything city past present and forever of course Right, yes, currently featuring, yes, currently featuring. He's got his own own article in the Manchester City Match Day program. His article kitted out, of course, some great stuff. Uh, if, you, if you don't buy the program or whatever, it's worth it. Just people like Mark and Dr. Gary James, stuff like that is, is my favourite bits in the program anyway. And his amazing collection, of course, you, you know, I'm sure you know Mark very, very well, of match-worn shirts, many stories, memories connected to them. He's got his own YouTube channel. Please subscribe to that. I'll try and put links in the, in the details below below etc and on screen so please check that out have a look at this one that i've done today on on the on the of course uh he's on twitter but he obviously does interviews with ex-players and and the shirts they've worn it's just a great thing to, to look at and and if you like me you like your history so this is just a small addition to his great memories i, I don't know what i'm going to come up against when i do it i don't know if there's anything significant in it i just i just pick a thing and then see what i find and and so say some 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 hopefully bit interest interesting stuff in it and uh, i try and give a little bit of background as well of course not just about the guy who wore the shirt but about the game and and the, the moments themselves so today we start you've seen it seen it on the thumbnail you know what it's about a top that was worn only twice uh, let's say it was uh, which is no not unusual these days but in those days it was as i said but uh, it was, perhaps you call it a lucky top because city were unbeaten in it we won't play 2-1-2 two, two. that'll do for me uh, any any tops are superstitious i'm not particularly but if you are out there you know what it's like you wear your favorite thing if you've done well in it your favorite pair of shoes your favorite shirt your favorite scarf etc but uh, City were never beaten in it as, as far as when it was worn and it was not the prettiest let's say it was it, but it was functional in design that's for sure so we're going to go back to 1991 season a unique goalkeeper's top goal we're talking a goalkeeper today of course that won by Tony Colton in just two matches against yet yeah, the same team because it, it needed a, an odd colour Norwich City uh, yeah and obviously the, this day and age you see all multicolour tops don't you so it's not a bigger problem perhaps in, in those days when you you know green was the basic colour perhaps, perhaps yellow but you didn't see anything too too uh, different in back in 30 odd years ago so the Norwich colours of course uh, most teams would have had a similar problem of course they were yellow or green so obviously yellow and green so it would have made those tops unsuitable to play against Norwich so yeah red's probably okay uh yeah probably we probably didn't like red too much so we got a i don't know puce colored one haven't we we'd call this it's obviously on screen there <laughs> not not the prettiest color to go with but uh yeah uh saying that the kits weren't and don't like confetti that they are now so there you go you got this wonderful one-off shirt that was made that was only ever worn twice i mean this was another going back to the season itself 1991 Another season of change for the time. It was uh, I had a period about five or six years where I was doing scrapbooks, and this fortune I was one of them. Uh, we've probably covered this this season in lots of different things on the history blogs I've done. So this was, of course, a season of change. Howard Kendall was in charge when we met Norwich for the first time at Main Road on the 15th of September 1990. It was match day five. Uh, so obviously, as we know, in less than two months after that, Kendall would be gone. With uh, he would be on his way. Paul Lake had literally just suffered his career-ending injury just 10 days previously against Aston Villa. And Colton, then age 29, was back in net as well as City's number one, despite a superb performance from Dibble in that already mentioned Villa game with the Paul Lake incident. Uh, Tony Colton had actually been ill before that game, so Andy Dibble had come into play. 
but Kendall's philosophy, I don't know if he, ever, if he stuck to this during his managerial career, but his philosophy was that if an informed player doesn't play because of an illness or an injury, he comes back in no matter how good his replacement is. And uh, yeah, Dibble had a cracking game against Villa, so he was certainly man of the match. So as I say, I'd love to know if Kendall stuck to that philosophy. Anyway, for this first game against Norwich, uh, Tony Colton was back. Uh, 26,247, I was there in that attendance to witness a 2-1 win over Dave Stringer's Norwich City at the time. And Colton was more or less a spectator in the first half, so he didn't get very muddy. And the top stayed nice and clean as we took uh, we took the game to Norwich. It was 2-0, it probably should have been a lot more. Uh, Quinn and, and Brennan scored the goals and Quinn produced the assist for Brennan as well. And it certainly should have been a lot more. But this wouldn't this wouldn't be City, would it? It wouldn't be City without problems. And uh, yeah, things ran pretty smoothly, but on 75 minutes... Our talisman, Peter Reid, who, of course, would uh, go on to bigger things at City, if you like, uh, was taken off, uh, which was normal. Normally, he did tire towards the end of games, and it was no surprise, and it happened many times. I remember it happened in a famous derby match where we were winning comfortably, ended up drawing it after Peter Reid was taken off. Two minutes later... Uh, after Reed went off, Colton was given no chances. Norwich got one back on 77 minutes. A, uh, a fleck, a fleck, blistering shot. Uh, Colton, seemingly no chance, came to the edge of his box but couldn't stop it from the angle and the distance and it hit the roof of the net. And finally, City panicked, as we probably would. 2-0 two, two becomes 2-1 with 15-plus uh, injury time to go. And finally, Colton had to earn his wages in the in the top. Uh, but somehow, we hung on for a win. It's, uh, at one stage, a look to formality. The same for typical City. Pete Gardner doing his form guy for the Manchester Evening News that day gave City and Tony Colton a healthy 7 out of 10. Yeah, the third highest of the day. And the win that win took City fifth in Division 1. By the time this had been washed and ironed and put away until the Carroll Road game, uh, yeah, it, would, uh, it got its second and final outing at Carroll Road the same season. Kendall had gone, of course, and he'd done one back to Everton. And Peter Reid had taken over as player-manager and been confirmed, I think, uh, just after Christmas time. Uh, the full extent of Paul Lake's injury that we mentioned early on was, uh, was known and it certainly wasn't to appear this season or the season after and would only start two more competitive games in the ninety in the eight uh, sorry ninety two ninety three season. And Colton uh, for this game was coming back of a man of the match performance himself in an FA Cup fourth round two one win at Port Vale. You remember that yeah it was uh, he was coming back off that so he was in good form himself. Fifteen thousand nine hundred and fourteen were at Carroll Road for match day twenty three. This was on the second of February nineteen ninety one. And it was a special day for Tony Colton as well, not on the fact that he had to got to wear this shirt for the second time, or this top, <laughs> but uh, he'd just been called up with uh, David White for the England B squad. Yes, the England B squad at the time. And very similar to the main role game at, at Carroll Road, uh, plenty of City fans in attendance in the corner there. Uh, we led 2-0 at half-time uh, through Quinn again and David White this time. And again, it should have been a lot more. Nor Norwich was struggling, <laughs> did struggle to contain us. But again... As in, as in the main road game, they pull one back in the late game surge. Although many thought it might have been offside. Actually, Colton, though restricted uh, to the one goal through, though making at least restricted Norwich to the one goal, though making at least three excellent saves, as uh, Peter Gardner called them, uh, to deny Norwich in that final salvo that they had. Uh, Two 0 down with twenty minutes to go. Norwich had thrown everything at City. Dale Gordon went through, uh, but Colton blocked him. Yeah, it's, there's lots of defenders about, but it seemed, Colton seemed to make it his responsibility to try and block the shot on the edge of the six-yard box. And it sort of bounced into the area. Now, Quinn should have really should have really cleared it. I don't know what he was doing. He fumbled around with it. And, of course, it was a scrappy goal then. Uh, and of course, a scrappy goal for Norwich. Say uh, John Polston, it was, had put it in on the line, and Colton was sort of nowhere because he did made that initial surge to try and stop the original shot. Uh, and of course, uh, Polston turned the ball on despite the presence of Niall Quinn, uh, who should have been able to clear it. But uh, yeah, Colton was an hand again then to to block a goal bound shot as time ran out from Mark Bowen and. Uh, Similar to the main road game, the shirt got a little bit of uh, wear and tear in that last few minutes. 
and we did hang on to win the game 2-1. In the Peter Gardner player ratings, Colton's 8 out of 10 this time he got was only bettered by David White on 9 out of 10. And the result at that time, we dropped a little bit. Uh, we kept City 8th in the league. Of course, we did go on to finish a creditable 5th. So there we have it. Yeah, a little bit of background, a little bit of story about the top. Uh, Tony Colton's performances in it, which were pretty good. Ultra rare shirt, as uh, as Mark called it, an ultra rare shirt worn by arguably one of City's best ever keepers. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, he was a cracking keeper for for a while, to Tony Colton. And although it got a little bit dirty, it did have a hundred percent win record. And uh, all right, not the prettiest, but it did its job. And uh, there's not many City shirts you could probably say that about, is that they had a hundred percent win record. So there you go. Thanks for joining me for this. Uh, oh, Mark liked it as well. Um, so give him a follow. Make sure you look at his channel, his YouTube channel. I'll give him a follow on Twitter. Lots of great stuff and read his pieces in the Manchester City New. Uh, sorry, in the Manchester City program, of course. So, thanks for joining me for this little match worn shirt. Especially if you like it, let me know. I'll try and do a few more. And pick out, as I say, I'll try and pick out unusual shirts, not ones that have been worn numerous times. Although I might, I might adapt it over time. You know what I'm like. I'm good at messing around with things. So thanks for joining for this match worn shirts. What happened special? Hope you enjoyed it and uh, let me know your thoughts and any memories you have. Do you have any memories? I mean, I'm sure when you watched that game, if you went to Carrow Road or Main Road, you didn't think, oh, that's a quite unique shirt. So you probably thought, what's that? <laughs> so let me know anyway, guys. Any memories you got, be great to hear from you. Thanks for watching, please. Until we meet again. And that's one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Bye for now. <laughs>